Yes, he is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Let us go before him in prayer. Eternal and wonderful God, we thank you. We honor you. We adore you for your goodness and your grace. How many times have you blessed us? How many times have you helped us? How many times have you made ways for us? How many times have you answered prayer? You're such a good God. This evening, oh God, we ask that you would do something special for us this evening, Lord. Go before us. Oh God, forgive us our sins and our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do great and marvelous things in our life today. Open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that we have not room enough to receive. Lord God, we ask that you would bless those that are sick among us, bless those that have lost loved ones. Oh God, you know our need way before we even ask. We love you for all that you've done, Lord, and we ask this evening that you would bless your word, uh, even through your vessel, Lord God. Bless your word, give us strength, give us wisdom and knowledge through that word, and we'll be careful to give you praise We'll be careful to give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture this evening, Isaiah 58, 1 through 11. Cry loud, spare not. Lift up, thy vo like vo like, lift up the voice like a trumpet and show thy people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet ye seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They asked of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? Say, they and thou seek, seest not whereof have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no, no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye you find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. It is such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, and that that break every yoke. Is it not to deal with thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast down, cast out to thy house? When thou seest the nation that thou covered him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine flesh, then shall my light break forth as the morning, and thy my health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thine reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the, the midst of thee the yoke, put it forth the the finger, and, and speaketh vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to hunger, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall the light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like the watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together one more time and give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many love the Lord on tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's just worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Can you help me say, I lift, I lift, I lift. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. You reign on the throne. For you. For you are God and God alone. Because of you. Because of you my cloudy days are gone. I'll sing to you this song. I can sing to you. This song, I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than me. Yes, Lord. Let's say that one more time. Say, I lift, I lift, I lift. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I'll sing to you this song. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say that I yes, Lord. love you more. Can we just say that one more time? Say, I lift, I lift, I lift. I lift my hands in total restoration. You reign on the throne. You reign on the throne. For you, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I'll sing to you. I can sing to you. I just want to say, I just want to say, yes, Lord. That I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Can y'all help me say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than Let's say that one more time in unison. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I worship and I adore you. I worship and adore Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, yes, Lord. Hey, say I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. 
of you our cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything someone put your hands together and give God a praise hallelujah come on give God a praise hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How many know through all of this, we just somehow got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because as long as God is in control, I know it's going to be all right. Put your hands together. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling, got a feeling. everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling, everything's going to be all right. Be all right, be all right, be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling, everything's going to be all right. Oh, Gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling, got a feeling. everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling, everything's gonna be all right. Be all right, be all right, 
this. The name of the Lord. And indeed, he is all right, is he not? And we bless God and we thank him and we worship him on tonight. Thank God for this beautiful praise team. God bless you. You may be seated. Appreciate you tonight. And we are just delighted and honored and thrilled to be back in the house of the Lord another time. It's good for us to be able to praise the Lord in his presence, as I often love to quote, is the fullness of joy at his right hand. There are indeed pleasures forevermore. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Now we're happy to have you here in Bible study tonight. So glad for you, uh, wherever you are seated in the sanctuary. Here we are in the virtual church, in the e-church, and uh, we're here tonight uh, to continue our journey in uh, as we look into uh, the mysteries and the wondrous things of God. I want you to do something for me, and that is I want you to uh, invite others to join us right quick. Do that for me, if you will. Can I count on you to do that real quick? Invite others to join us in Bible study tonight. Just uh, take a moment right now, send out a text, uh, let other people know that Bible study is on. We're not going to be here real long tonight, but we are here to look into the word of the Lord. Come on, let's uh, pull some other people through this door. And remember what I always tell you, as we operate in the virtual space, it enables us uh, to uh, really, we can be terrific evangelists during this time, terrific soul winners. Uh, if we would just take a few moments and avail ourselves of this time and of of this hour. So uh, let's take a few moments and let's reach out to uh, one another. Let's reach out to one another uh, in, in Jesus' name. Let's reach out to one another in Jesus' name and let's exemplify the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by reaching out, by um, touching others. Amen. We can be uh, a blessing. We can be a blessing. And we love all the saints of God, all of you who are in class right now. It is well. Don't let anything rattle you. All of you well. Amen. Come on, just focus in on the lesson tonight and pray God uses me tonight. But it is well, saints of God. Uh, so don't um, don't don't worry about other stuff. Amen. Just lock in uh, on uh, the class in Jesus' name and see what God wants to say to us tonight. Just tune on in. Just tune on in. All right. Um, we told you where we would be. I hope you're being blessed uh, in this consecration. I hope you're being blessed in this consecration. I hope you're being blessed uh, in this consecration that you are actually participating. I haven't sent out any. Uh, sometime I write a few things uh, throughout this consecrated period. I haven't given you any musings thus far this week. Who knows? Who knows? But how are you doing with this fast? Are you focusing? Are you focusing? That's my question. Are you actually doing it? Amen. Are you actually doing it uh, this week? How are you doing with your postings in social media? Remember, they're all supposed to be spiritual this week. Everything is about God this week through Sunday evening. How are you doing? And I'm asking that from every generation uh, in the church I pastor. Middle age, older, younger Young adults, teenagers, children, um, I'm counting on us this week. Anything in social media, it's spiritual. We are focusing on the Lord because we want to draw close to him. And then we're going to celebrate at the end of this week by going uh, to uh, the Lord's table. And so God bless you. I'm just looking, seeing who's in church. 
God bless you, Sister Kendra uh, James. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Sister James, God bless you. Uh, Elder Levi, Elder Nora Levi, God bless you. So glad to see all of you here present in the house of the Lord on today. Now, let's do this. Let's back up and let's hit a few verses uh, in reverse first. Sometime I just want to uh, make sure we have that connective tissue going forward as we share. Nobody uh, gets off course. So I'm going to read them uh, in this order on tonight. I want to first go to, let me see, let's first go to Ephesians 6, 19. Let's first go to Ephesians 6, 19. That's, uh, we're, that's what the, out of our launching uh, scripture as we talked about uh, this realm of uh, this realm of prayer because we said we want to focus on our mouths so I just want to remind you of the scripture <laughs> we started down this pathway with it says and for me Paul says that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth to make known he says the mystery of the gospel that's Ephesians 6 uh, 19 uh, Remember in verse 18, there's two words there. And this got us started talking about prayer in the mouth. Verse 18, the two words that begin that verse, simply praying, he said, always. Praying always with all prayer. Praying at all times. <laughs> and uh, he directed that prayer. He directed that prayer uh, in verse 19, uh, after we pray for all saints, at the end of verse 18, Paul personalizes it and says, I want you to pray for me in particular. Uh, and what was that prayer for him in particular? That utterance may be given unto me. Now, I've sort of spun off of that utterance, he said, may be given unto me that I may open what my mouth boldly to proclaim, uh, uh, or rather to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, all I was saying there, I suspect that by the time Paul wrote these words, uh, he probably didn't have in mind what I've had in my mind for the last several weeks, but it works. Um, at the highest level, at the highest level, I don't think Paul was around gossiping and slandering and uh uh, posting tweets I don't think Paul was doing that but I do think Paul had the humility within his own personhood <laughs> to ask that for prayer to regulate what comes out of his mouth you hear what I said he had the humility to ask for prayer, that what would come out of his mouth <laughs> would be God glorifying. I want you to think about this tonight. Give it some thought. Give it some thought. I want it to be God glorified. This is the great apostle Paul. Most people <laughs> don't give thought to what comes out of their mouth. You know what comes out of their mouth? Any and everything just pops up pops out but Paul said I want I, I want prayer because when I open my mouth especially to preach the gospel I want to open it boldly I want to be able to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news I just want to go back there to sort of give you perspective again on why we're even bothering to um to have this discussion. Um, I want you to go now back to Psalm again. Let me put that back in atmosphere. Psalm 19, 14. Then we'll pick up some gusto and go where we're trying to go tonight. Psalm 19 and 14. Let's read that again. 
The psalmist prays this prayer. We read Paul's prayer requests. The psalmist prays this now for himself. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my what heart be acceptable where in thy sight. O Lord, he says, my strength and my redeemer. All right. My mouth, my meditation. I want to put that back in your orbit. Now, as we left off last week, we were talking to us about a few things. Um, we were talking about <laughs> this social media platform, um, the misuse of it, the obsession with it. Um, the demonic influences that are back behind it. That's where we left off last week when we were having some dialogue about it. Oh, oh how I wish, wish you were here in person so we could talk eye to eye about this. But there's some real issues that are going on with our speech whether it is verbal and or written. And these are some things that you and I need help from God. I'm spending so much time here, uh, dear saints of God, because, because things have, have gotten out of hand. We've gotten out of hand. Let me say it to you another way. <clears throat> this whole medium has gotten out of hand. Truth be told, our government doesn't even know what to do with it. We couldn't even have um, a sane election. Because it's out of hand. And the people who use it are out of hand. From those of a lower office to those of a higher office, out of hand. You have social media trying to regulate itself, and I don't know that they're trustworthy to regulate themselves. Stay with me tonight. I don't know if they're trustworthy to even regulate themselves. But I guess they made some effort with certain postings. They take them down. They say they're not true. I'm going to try to double back there before we leave tonight. But it's out of control. And it's out of control because, because we're out of control. Part of our problem, and that's why uh, uh, fasting and prayer is good when it's done correctly it put it put it puts back in front of us the things that are really important and what really matters we're out there tweeting and posting and flipping pages locked on a phone locked on a uh computer, a tablet, flicking, looking, looking, flicking. And I believe the Lord brought something to my mind today. We are wasting our lives. Now you know it's got to be true when, when the world understands it that to be the situation. Stay with me. Don't get mad. Tell somebody else to come to church. Don't you leave church. Get somebody else to come to church. This thing
Everything is so out of control. Let's leave the church for a moment until, let's just do the, the iPhone. That's my phone. They put an app in the phone to tell you how much time you're surfing the internet. Oh, I wish I could have some prayer here tonight. We're so locked <laughs> into <laughs> This nothingness. Boy, I wish I could talk like I want to talk. I'm trying to be judicious in what I say. Focus in on, on mindless babblings. And I'm being nice. Stuff that doesn't even matter. That, that in truth has no relevance to your life. And we stay out here for hours. Sometimes you need to look at yourself. Hours. Looking at pictures. Looking at this thing. Looking at that thing. It certainly has no relevance to salvation, no relevance to, to our relationship with Christ, no relevance actually to our growth, spiritually, even naturally. But we're just linked in. Can't even sit up in church sometime without trying to see what's going on on Facebook. You saying hallelujah while you flipping through Facebook. You can't sit down and eat dinner with your family without looking at what the latest tweet. Without following the post. Here it is. You even follow a post of people you don't even like. I wish somebody would pray for me tonight. Let me, let me give you a, 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 I wonder if there's a scripture talk to us about how we spend our time. I wonder if does what the scriptures say have implications. You know, God's word is so rich. Until what was written thousands of years ago covers what's going down today. Because even though it may not be the same methodology or the same tools the same spirit is at work. We got the same God on high and there's, we're dealing with the same devil that, that foments from the pit of hell. Let's go, let's, let's, let's go to the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Stay with me. I hope I make sense before this night is over. Ephesians chapter 5. Now what has happened among us, even in the church? And oh God, I wish we had started teaching on this years ago. We might have been able to save a few generations. Satan is so clever and so slick. That he's, he's built up these entities to become a major distraction in our life. We don't even know it.
I'll read verse 14 in Ephesians 5. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, Christ shall give thee light. I'm just reading that for context. But verse 15 is, is what I really want. See then that ye walk how? Circumspectly. That's what the authorized or KJV says. I want you to walk circumspectly, Paul says, to the church at Ephesus and ultimately to you and I who are a part of the 21st century church, walk circumspectly. And don't walk as fools, but instead walk as wise. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let's look at the amplified translation of that verse. And see what it says. Look carefully then how you walk. Who is he talking to? He's talking to you and I as, as fellow believers in the body of Christ. Look carefully then how you walk. I want 50 of you to drop it in the line for a rhetorical question and ask one another, how are you walking? And I'm talking to us today in this hour, in this time. How is it that you and I are walking? How are we living our lives? Ask that question to each other in light of, oh yeah, specifically tonight, in light of social media. Oh, I'm going to ask the side question real quick. If somebody looked at your Facebook page, <laughs> if they looked at your uh, Twitter account or your uh Instagram account, what's that other one? Or your Snapchat, would they know that you're saved? And then let me ask you another question after that. If they looked at it, if they knew that you claimed to be a Christian, would they view you as a mature Christian? How are you representing Christ? With all your shade. With the shadiness of your shade. Let me say it like this. The shadiness of your shade. Would they know you, would they think of you as a mature Christian? And while I'm asking that, how mature is it when everybody knows you're mad? Because the first thing you do is you, you go and announce it to the world. I got to know when you and your boyfriend fell out. Oh, I want to talk, but I'm going to get in trouble. I got to know when you, when you got separated from you and your boyfriend fell out and you on there popping off your mouth at another woman calling the B's and W's and heifers. Oh, I better stop. And you say, you're a Christian.
fighting over a man who don't want neither one of you. If you got to fight for him, he ain't worth having. Let me leave that alone. Same works the same way around. You got to fight for her. She's not worth having. I don't want to go down that trail. What I'm really dealing with is the immaturity we display. The childishness we display. You don't like something that went on at church, so you go post. You don't like something the preacher said, so you go post. That shows how immature you are. And the sad thing about it, I'm a presider, so I'm, I'm going to make this little statement keep running. Sad thing about it is oftentimes those of us supposed to be preachers don't show anything better. You got an altar against somebody, you're supposed to leave your gift at the altar and go to that person and be reconciled. Not <laughs> to the social media platform and be alienated more. Now that's not even what I want. Look carefully then, put that Amplified Translation back up there for a moment. Look carefully then how you walk. Look at what he says here. Live how? Purposefully. Purposefully. And worthily. And accurately. Not as the unwise and witless. Now I didn't say that. This biblical translation said that. If, if, if you... I dare you when the, when the week is, well, you can do that this week, it's spiritual. Go back and look through your posts and see how many of them portray you as being witless. Of course, if I'm witless, I probably don't know I'm witless. So maybe I need to get somebody to, to help me. Maybe, I ought to, maybe if this is a good week, get your prayer partner. Well, you, you, you probably don't have a prayer partner. You got a partner for everything else but a prayer. Not you, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking about these other folk. Get somebody you trust and say, hey, look at this Facebook, look at my, my account, let's go back over the last year, tell me if I'm witless. Oh, I'm getting warm. Y'all, somebody tell me to stop, I'm getting warm. Oh, man. The stuff we say, the stuff we do, and, and, and how we misrepresent Christ. He says, but as wise. Notice what's in the parentheses. That's, that's what the Amplified Bible is all about. It, it's expansive. They take some liberties. I think they're on point here. What is wise? Sensible, intelligent people. Saints ought to be sensible and intelligent people. Help me, Holy Ghost. The next verse, go to the KJV first. Let's get verse 16 real quick. Verse 16 uh, in the KJV says, redeeming what? The time because what? The days are evil. Amplified, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. What is he saying to us? Don't waste your time. Whew. Bishop, are you anti-social media? Almost. 
I'm not. I know it's here to stay. I know it can be a powerful medium to do good. But, but, but I'm sorry to report to you, most of us are not doing good with it. It's a platform for the display of wit, witlessness, ignorance, hatred, mal, malice, envy, strife. It's a platform for the display of pride and arrogance. I'm trying not to go there. I may double back around. I said something, i never forget, I said something a year or two ago, I was just preaching my own morning service. And I said something about Facebook, and, and I mentioned, I asked a question, and I'm going to ask again tonight, that why all the selfies? And I made that statement, in love, to the people I pastored that know I love them and I and I believe they love me and they know I said it in the spirit of love. They, a, a woman went out there and don't even know me and blasted me. She was mad with me. She don't even know what I said. She wasn't in my in in the service. She didn't know the context in which I was saying. I don't I don't say that trying to be a Jim Jones or a controller. I'm saying that because a uh, uh, part of my function as a man of God is to be a conduit through which God sends out his word and when I send out that word it talks to me too and, and one thing we should be challenged on every day is our motives That's the, let the words of my mouth and what else the meditation of my heart part of that is my motive why do you post what you post? And I think every one of us, including me, and I, I, I have that struggle now, and I'm still working on it. Did one of these lights go out of here? I'm still working on it. I'm still dealing with it. Many times before I hit a button, I stop and ask myself, should I post this? We all should do that. What's my rationale for it? What's the reason behind it? How many times do you need to see my face puckered up? How many times do you need to see, oh, I'm going there, y'all going to get, I'm going to get some letters, dirty letters tonight. How many times do you need to see the different colors of my unneeded contact lenses? See, there's a, there's a, oh God, can I say this? Can I, can, somebody tell me, keep teaching, I'll stop. But they told me in the room to keep teaching. Somebody out there tell me to keep teaching. Now I want you to help me get the word out. Somebody's going to get mad. But I want you to write this. A few of y'all help me take shifts in writing down what I would have you say to one another in sanctuary. Let me get 25 people to write this. There is a thin line between healthy self-esteem and arrogance. And you better ask God through the Holy Ghost to give you the discernment to know the difference. Because one thing you don't want to be is arrogant. Pride goeth before destruction. There's a thin line between a healthy self-esteem and arrogance. I said it, I'm not going to take it back. We got to watch it. The Bible teaches humility. The Bible teaches us not to push ourselves. It teaches us to push Christ. Sunday, I remind you what John said. He must increase and I must decrease.
So why are you posting your picture every week and every other day? You have to answer. I can't answer it for you. You have to answer. You have to talk to him. I'm just, I'm trying to do what Peter told us to do. Hopefully I'm stirring up your pure mind. We have lost humility in the body of Christ. And social media, the communication that goes on in social media has not aided that. The last four years, I'm not going there deep tonight. The last four years have not aided that because we witnessed arrogance in the highest seat in the land. And it does have an effect on the entire culture. Arrogance, conceit, the Bible talks about all of that. God is against all of that. He hates a haughty look. He hates the spirit of pride. If I am good looking, you shouldn't, you shouldn't boast about it. Well, I said it. If you are good looking, whatever that is, you shouldn't boast about it. If you're good looking, just be good looking. I know I'm not making no sense now. I wanted you to catch in this text is is, is what I'm posting what I'm tweeting if all the posts and other tweets I watch is it a good use of my time am I redeeming the time is my life purposeful and on point purposeful on point in, in terms of the will of God and the direction of God my, I don't even know God's direction because I'm out there so much I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to your neighbor. Most of us spend more time, just be real tonight. We spend more time doing social media than we do reading the word of God. It's a struggle for me to read a chapter a day. But I can surf, flick, 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 flick. flick. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to see who's walking out of church. Facebook's hanging decent. Take me to YouTube. Let's just walk through these scriptures. Let me see here where I want you to go now. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 3 and 11. And let me tell you what we're, what we're really guilty of. Let me tell you why we flick, 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 flick. Stay with me. Second Thessalonians three and eleven. Why are we going there? Just watch, I'm going to say this to you. Watch that spirit of pride. Watch that spirit of self-importance. Watch that spirit of self-emulation. Watch that spirit of pushing yourself. I don't, I, I, uh, I don't want to go down the wrong trail. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, we're not supposed to push ourselves. The Bible says concerning Christ, <laughs> who came into this world with the, with the prerogatives of absolute deity. The Christ who came into this world with the prerogatives of absolute deity, the Bible says he made of himself no reputation. And yet I see people push themselves. I see preachers push themselves.
Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Let's read this. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now, I'm going I'm I'm to switch this. Some of you can't even do the job you're working on. You're cheating your job because you spend half your time on the social media while you're working. I know I'm telling the truth. You don't have to say nothing to me. Can I help us tonight? Will you stay with me tonight? But here's the real point I want to make to you. Let me tell you, the, 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 the spirit that, that envelops our world and that walks through the church, number one, we're busybodies. I like the Amplified Bible. It brings it out better. Because <laughs> Somebody said, what, what, what a busybody. Well, I'm going to tell you, put that Amplified up there. Indeed, we hear there are some among you who are disorderly that are passing their lives. Catch that phrase. I said it to you earlier. We're wasting our lives. Passing their lives. How? In idleness. Neglectful of duty. If you're a child of God, you have duty. Bishop, I, I, Bishop, I want you to pray for me because I need to know my role and my calling and purpose in life. You ain't going to never find it because you... You come off Facebook, we might be able to find something. Oh, I can't, I don't want to get in trouble. I got a headache. Some of y'all, it ain't a caffeine headache. Some of y'all having withdrawals this week. You can't tweet like you want to tweet. <laughs> now, we didn't even go after Luke. We just asked you to stay spiritual. But if I asked us to stay spiritual, I wonder, uh, uh, to get off it all together, we will take that challenge up perhaps in January. But, but a lot of us have never made it a week without going out there. Scared I'm going to miss something. Put that scripture back up there. Being busy with who? Other people's affairs instead of their own. And doing no work. My vision ain't coming together in my life. That's cause you looking at everybody else's vision. You ain't spending no time praying. Getting the mind of God for you. And, and you're out here. Oh I wish I was making sense. You're caught up. You're, this is. I believe the Lord gave this to me. Just this clear. He said what we're doing. In the social media is, is we are busybodies in other people's affairs. You're out there commenting on stuff that ain't none of your business to comment on. You have appointed yourself an expert on something by which you have no expertise. You out there telling other people what to do with their life. Your life ain't even together. Caught up in other people's affairs. You done got mad at somebody you don't even know. You don't even know if the person that they said did such and such to them. You don't even know it's true. And yet you out there making a comment. Busy bodies. Everybody ask a question in the comment line. Ask your, ask your neighbor, 
Is you a busybody? Yes, I wanted with the ebonics. Is you a busybody? You stay out there because you don't have a life of your own. You stay out there because you find no purpose and no meaning in your own. And it's not because there is not a purpose or a meaning for your life. You have not sought God for it. You have allowed the devil to feed you the bread of idleness by getting caught up in this social media mess and junk. God help us tonight. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm stopping because I want us to think tonight. We're destroying ourselves. It's a destructive force in the church. and We don't even get it. This thing is a destructive force in the very fabric of our culture and our society and our world. We're eating each other up out there. Feeding frenzy. I gotta, I gotta know. I gotta know. Let me open it back up. Let me open it back up. You just looked at it five minutes ago. What possibly could have happened in five minutes? Let me open it back up. You can't sit through a service without peeking in it. You just got through shouting and speaking in tongues. As soon as you sat down, you flipped your phone open. Somebody know I'm telling the truth. Am I telling the truth? Saints of God, y'all out there in the church, am I telling the truth right now? Half of it's a lie. I told you that. Because we feel like we have to portray a lie to other people. I, I thank God I've been, for the most part, delivered from that. First Timothy 5, 13. Let's go there right quick. Now it's 8.16, I want to be very judicious with your time. My OOS says I'm supposed to stop now. With your permission, I'll go to about 8.30. You tell me. I'm not going to go long like I did last week. Y'all tell me, keep going or stop. I want to be judicious with your time because I want you to come back next week. I'm waiting on some replies first in Facebook. Tell me what to do. I don't see nothing. All right, they tell me go ahead and uh, on um, what is this? YouTube. All right, is Facebook working? All right, all right. I got enough to tell me to go on. I'll keep going for a minute. So 8.17, we'll roll 8.30. Now, I don't want to get into the context here altogether, 1 Timothy 5.13, but it's applicable to all of us. I know Paul is talking about the silly women, but it's applicable to all of us. And so let's just deal with verse 13, in the interest of time. And what does it say? And whither they learn to what? Be idle. Now listen to me. 
They have learned to be idle. They have learned to be idle. They have learned to be idle. The context of their life has taught them to be idle. And here's what they do. They wander from post to post and tweet to tweet and picture to picture. Did y'all hear what that scripture said? They've learned to be idle. They wander from post to post and tweet to tweet and picture to picture. They spend four hours a day on Facebook, five hours a day on, on Twitter. They don't know it. They won't even check the app on their phone that'll tell them. They spend very little time reading God's word. They get fidgety and, and antsy in Bible study if it goes over 10 minutes. They fidgety on Sunday morning. They don't come back Sunday night. But they can spend four hours on Facebook. I'm getting in trouble right now. I hope I don't lose nobody. I can spend four hours surfing the internet. I can spend three hours cumulatively on on Twitter, on Facebook. But I got a timer on the worship service. And it better not go too long. Could it be that the things of God don't interest me could it be that I'm more interested in the lives of other people than I am in eternal life? That's more interesting. The dirt on somebody else is more interesting. I can't read the Bible. I'd rather read social media because the dirt on other people's life is more interesting. If I read the Bible through the lens of the Holy Spirit, it'll show me my dirt. So they wander from platform to platform, post to post, tweet to tweet, and then guess what? And they're not only idle, but, they, but they're tattlers also, and busybodies speaking what? Things? They shouldn't have said it, but they said it. Put that Amplified Bible back up there, please. Give me the Amplified Bible. I'll read it while it's getting up there. There it is. Moreover, as they go from house to house, they learn to be idlers, and not only idlers, but gossips and busybodies, saying what they should not say and talking of things they should not mention. We don't read these scriptures very often. Let me ask you a question. What have you said this week that should have never come out your mouth? Whether with your fingers or with your tongue. Well, move real fast. First Corinthians 2 2. Go there real quick. I got to work with eight minutes. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let me move. I have to move quickly. <laughs> I like what Paul said. I'm just going to read and keep moving. He said, I don't want to know your business. 
He said, for, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and, and him crucified. The Amplified Bible says, for I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make a display of the knowledge of nothing, and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and him crucified. Uh, uh, true saints don't want to know other folks' business. Not mature saints. Ten of y'all drop it in the line and make a statement of maturity and say, I don't want to know your business. And then 10 more of you come right behind that and help some child of God mature and tell them, stop putting all your business on Facebook. I don't need to know when you fell out with your brother. I don't need to know you got daddy issues. I don't need to know about the girl who took your, boy, boy, your good for nothing lazy boyfriend. I don't need to know if you're having marital problems. about to get in trouble. I don't want to go there. I need 10 more of you come right behind that and say think before you post. And then I need 10 more of you to come right behind that and say pray before you post. Make any of those statements. Put a, ra a ramble out there. Let me ask you a question. Should I or shouldn't I? Always check the motive in your heart. I got a new house. Should I put it on Facebook or shouldn't I put it on Facebook? Should I put my rooms on Facebook or should I not? You could be right doing it. You could be wrong doing it. Motive. I showed everybody my new car. Why? I'm not saying whether you're right or wrong, but I am saying this to you. You should pray and make sure that I'm doing this in the Holy Ghost. Am I doing it for a testimony or am I doing it to show off? I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying we should be prayerful enough to always check ourselves. It could be very right and appropriate for you to do it, but make sure it's right and appropriate for you to do it and you've asked God to check your motives out. But I do know this, a whole lot of us, we say too much, we spend too much time out there, and when you spend a whole lot of time out there, it, it ain't but a matter of time, you're going to get out of God's will with some of that stuff. I'm tired of seeing your business myself. I'm learning to keep going. I don't have to look at stuff. No profit to it. And it's a lot of wasted time. Remember what I said? I got four minutes. And I need to read one more quick passage. Remember what I said? You know, the birthday thing is good, but, but how much of my day should I spend saying happy birthday? You got to think about that. I've been reevaluating that. I've been used to do a lot of it, but I've been reevaluating it. Now, so if Bishop Gates don't tell you happy birthday, it's not because he don't wish you happy birthday, but I ain't got time. I got a church to run, an organization to run. I got a lot of business to do for the king than to spend 30 minutes saying happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Facebook, I get it. Help me tell so and so. But if it's 30 of y'all, I ain't got time to tell everybody happy anniversary. And if I told you the truth, you don't either. Cause, me, well, how are you going to say that? Because you ain't read your Bible today. You ain't prayed, you didn't even get a good five minute prayer in the day. Now you know I'm telling the truth, don't you get mad and walk out. Because you know I'm telling the truth. You barely prayed. You telling somebody, have a good day, happy birthday, happy anniversary day, and you, even, you haven't even thanked God for the day. I can't get no help. Ain't nobody going to tell me. Look at this. Look at this. They upset.
Romans 12, 2, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I was going to go there and read it. I'm not going to read it. Just going to drop that on you. We got to get our mind together. I got one last passage. I got two minutes. Two minutes over it you gave me. Let me see if I can do it. First Timothy. Maybe we'll start here next week. Chapter 1. Let me see if I can just... I'm just going to read verse 4 and stop there today and come back if you tell me next week. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. Now I'll make this work if you give me an opportunity to come back next week. I'll make it work mining it in its context. Don't think I know contextually what Paul is addressing. I know about the law. I'll get back to that. But that, the law is not my emphasis here. He's talking to the young man, telling him, and ultimately the saints, telling us how to be sound in our mind. I'm taking this scripture and I'm applying it to our age in the age of all the, the misconcepts that are going on in the social media. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do give me the next verse real quick now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned give me the next verse for which some have swerved have turned aside under vain jangling now, there are a lot of different directions I could go. My time is gone tonight. I need you to come back next week. But I, I, I started something Sunday. And, and what I was doing with Sunday is a byproduct of social media. And some of you didn't understand that I was being satirical. A few of you didn't. But there's a lot of fables that circulate on Facebook. And because we're idle, we are passing them around and believing them. I want to say more, but my time is up. So I need about 50 to tell me, come on back with it next week, Bishop, and I'll stay here. If you need me to stay here, I just want to hear from you that I'm plowing the right field. And that's probably my flesh asking that. Tell me to come on back. All right. All right. Good witnesses in YouTube. Let me see Facebook real quick. If it's not frozen. All right. Bring somebody with you. We got to talk about this stuff. Let the words of what? My mouth. And the meditation of what else? My heart. Be acceptable how? In thy sight. Let the words of my post, let the words of my tweets, let the pictures of my Instagram, let the snap of my Snapchat be acceptable in my sight. <laughs> oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now God bless you. I need you to hold on for two minutes. Please don't leave if you don't have to. We got to keep the fast this week, y'all. It's tough. It works on us in different ways. You know, I was teasing about a Facebook headache. I, I think yesterday I actually had a caffeine headache. I had a splitting headache last night. But that's part of fasting. 
It's an affliction of the soul and we afflict the soul through afflicting our flesh. No, it's not flagellation, but it is affliction. Jeremiah said it was good for me that I had been afflicted. We need this. And remember, if you can't totally fast from midnight end or whatever time you retire until four, participate in the denial that pinches your flesh. You may have to eat for medicinal reasons or other reasons, but just do something. You figure out what it is. God will show you. You know yourself. Do something that pinches that flesh. Makes it a little difficult for that part of the day. Restrict what you watch on television. Restrict what you listen to by way of music. Because you want this week to be a, a week of godly focus. And um, above all, the challenge this week was to see how much discipline I can exercise while I'm on the social media. And I want you to encourage one another. Your friends, you know, you can talk to your friends. Tell your friend now, I don't know if that one, if that post was kingdom or not. I know a lot of selfies are not kingdom. I don't need to see your face this week. See what you can do. The Lord will help you. All right. We're fasting tomorrow. We're fasting Thursday. We're fasting Friday. Oh yeah, we're fasting Saturday. Every day till four. Sunday, Sunday we're going to go to noon. And I don't want to hear it because I'm going to come preach and I ain't eight. So don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me nothing. You'll be all right. <laughs> You'll be all right. You all ready you can drink juice and stuff. You'll be all right. Now, we need to pray. Don't forget that prayer at 10 a.m., another prayer at 6 p.m. You know the schedule. Make those prayer meetings. Make that international prayer tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Your prayers ought to be more anointed because you're fasting. Make that 8 a.m. prayer. Meet me in the 8 a.m. prayer on Saturday. But be on those prayers through the week. Minister's Revival, tomorrow night and Thursday night. We have some great preachers in our virtual campus, in our Detroit campus, in our Indianapolis campus. Make sure you come to those services. Is that on Facebook Live and YouTube? How's that service coming? Yes. How you see us Tuesday night on Sunday, that's how you experience the minister's revival. We have some great preachers. Let's, let's participate in those services. Let's keep them encouraged and let's receive the engrafted word of God Wednesday and Thursday. And then Thursday, we also have a beautiful SOARS meeting. That is going to be on the Zoom platform. I told you I'm going to be there. Look for me. I'm coming. Because uh, my room was getting tight on me the other day. I challenge others to meet me. <laughs> and let us be blessed by Dr. Tracy Pulliam. Great impartation is going to come from her to help us navigate these challenging times. I hope you'll be there. And um, it's Zoom though. We got to come in visually. We got to come in visually because we're going to talk. We're going to be blessed. We're going to receive a download, but we got to come in visually. I challenge you. I dare you to come to this session. Who was that that said, come fly with us? Was that, was that United? <laughs> come fly with us. We're going to soar, successfully overcome and rejoice. Spirit filled medical doctor. Come on singers, please. Let me get behind my six foot marker. Everybody's standing as we prepare to leave this place. Now, Saturday, we're gonna have, we got, we got service Sunday morning. We're going to go to the Lord's table Sunday night. We're having Holy Communion. If you don't have your elements, I want you to stop by the church in Detroit or in Indianapolis. Pick them up, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We, we don't want anybody to be left out. 
If you need some help, call your friend. Tell them to come down and get it for you. I need someone to catch this. Ebony Thetford, one of our members. She's probably our first. She is our first virtual member. Kyle, I'm making you responsible to find out whoever does it. You don't have to do it, but you got to make sure it's done. If it's not done, it's your fault. I need Ebony Express mail the elements. She missed out on the announcement. Make sure she has the elements. It's your fault the daughter won't be at the Lord's table. Y'all pray for Kyle. So miss out on the communion because he didn't help her. God bless every one of you. All right, it's tithe and offering time. Let's bless the house of the Lord. You know how to do this. We're going to pray. Close this service out. First three bullets through either the Indianapolis campus or the Detroit campus to self-service. Then there's a number you can call. Someone will assist you. Let's bless the house of God so we can be solvent and strong. Are you standing? We're just going to sing a song. We're not going to have an official prayer until this week is over. Ministers, don't have a prayer of benediction because we're in a week of consecration. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Let's just sing this song as we prepare to leave. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith. By faith on him, unstable land, a higher plane, a higher plane. Then I have found, Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet on I let's say it one more time Lord lift me up this is our close Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven by faith on him Unstable land, a higher plane, a higher plane. Then I have found, then I have found. Lord, plant my feet. Lord, plant my feet on high. God bless you. God bless you. See you at the revival. See you at Soars. See you in the prayer meetings. See you Sunday morning. See you at the Lord's table for Holy Communion Sunday night. See you Saturday. Those that still need to pick up your elements. Love you. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. A higher plane. Sing, Bishop. I'm trying. Then I have found. Take it, girl. Oh, there you go. My feet are high.